going on guys? Well, today I'm trying my hand at a, uh, a true black and tan uh, because I saw this. This is a total impulse purchase. This is called the Perfect Black and Tan. This is basically just a tool to pour this more successfully. Um, the idea here is to make a black and tan, if you don't know, it's basically a layered beer drink. So on the bottom you have a lighter beer, on the top you have a darker beer. Traditionally I believe it's a lager on the bottom and a porter on top. Uh, most black and tans, if you get at a bar or something, they're going to use Guinness. Um, I did get Guinness Extra Stout because this is my favorite of all the Guinness varieties. Although this might work better with uh, Guinness in a can, you know, with the widget, the little shot of nitrous or whatever it is, so you have more head. I don't know, we're going to find out. But basically, this goes on top of your glass. Uh, well, first you pour your lager in about halfway, then you put this on top, and then when you pour your darker beer on the top here, it evenly distributes it through these holes. It kind of rains down so that it doesn't mix. The whole idea here is that you want a layered drink. You want a light beer on the bottom, dark beer on the top, okay? So we're gonna give it a crack and see if this works. So like I said, Guinness Extra Stout for my dark and Yingling Lager for my, uh, my lager. All right, so I say I get a pour about halfway or so. That should be fine. And I got the uh, K bar bottle opener here. All right, so putting our perfect black and tan tool on top. Now, by the way, if you don't have one of these or if this seems interesting to you, you can accomplish the same thing by using uh, the back of a spoon. Okay, just like if you know bartenders use this for other mixed drinks too. Basically, if you have a let's suppose this is your spoon, right? And this is right side up, like you're eating your soup. Uh, turn it upside down, hold it like this, and pour it over the back of the spoon. That'll prevent it from dropping down and mixing. All right, but this, like I said, is supposed to be an easier way to do this. So we're gonna find out right now how this works. And it's not working so well because I'm using the extra stout. All right, so it mixed, it mixed on me. So it's a little uh, lesson learned here. All right, so fast forward to uh, a week later <laughs> because it's hard to find the uh, Guinness in a can. So yeah, we're gonna try this again. Obviously you saw the first time was a fail. It just uh, mixed right away, it didn't stay separated. Uh, the cans have a widget in here, which is a little shot of nitrous or whatever. So, hopefully, the the extra foam is going to give us the uh, you know the effect we want. Okay, it's basically mimicking you know pouring Guinness uh, on draft. You know, so let's get start with our lager. And again, pouring up about halfway or so. That should be fine. The perfect black and tan tool on top. There we go. Definitely seems to be working better. Yeah, it's actually staying separated. What we wanted. All right, let's let that do its thing for a minute there. A little bit more. Yeah, so if you order a black and tan at a bar, obviously they're pouring the Guinness from, you know, draft. It's on draft, in other words. So um, that's the effect you get using these cans with the little widget inside. So there we go. It looks like a successful black and tan. Very cool. All right, so it does work. There we go. It's completely separated. I don't know how I can really show you that. I guess just hold it up there. So we have our lager on the bottom and our Guinness on top, our black and our tan. All right, cool. Let's take a little sip. See how it tastes.
pretty good. I'm getting uh, mostly the Guinness flavor, but uh, some of that Yingling Lager kind of snuck in a little bit uh, on the sip, so it is it is mixed together a little bit. Mm, interesting. Let's take another sip. I'm just wondering if this is going to be, you know, mixing together as you're drinking it. Uh, yeah, not really. You can definitely taste both, though. It's interesting. Um, you don't get the carbonation, really, from the lager so much. Because the, the Guinness is very... I mean, if you've ever had Guinness before, you know it. It almost tastes like it's flat. You know, the carbonation really isn't there so much. So on each sip, you're getting... If I have to put a, a number on it, maybe 75% of the Guinness and then like 25% of that lager kind of sneaks in a little bit. Um, interesting though, it's cool. You know, it's cool it's separated and everything. All right, yay. So this does work. I mean, I knew it would work, but uh, it's not something that's necessary. If you're going to be doing this a lot, if you really like black and tans, you might want to invest in the tool for 10 bucks, you know. I'm sure you can get it other places cheaper. Williams Sonoma tends to be a little expensive, but uh, yeah, like I said before, you can get the same effect by using the back of a spoon, you know, and pouring it over that. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm only having one, so I'm not gonna waste another one just trying it with the spoon. But I would assume you could get basically the same effect. You don't need this special tool. But hey, it's a novelty, you know. That's why I got it. Like I said, it was a total impulse purchase, but I'm happy with it. It's another little bar tool. Black and tan. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care.